Welcome to Assassin Codes. Today we are talking about week two of your prep into the PSPO1 exam. So let's directly get to it. This is where we talk about when you have just one week to go in for your PSPO1 test. PSPO1 is nothing but professional scrum product owner assessment that is provided by scrum.org and you will end up getting a certificate with no expiry date and that certifies that you have the ideas into the scrum framework and all the concepts underlying values and principles so what do you do now by now i hope you have a very well used underlined and inked version of a scrum guide if not this is you need to pause and really go into it. The scrum guide is the basis of your journey into this area. And for me, it was the, like the Holy Grail or the Bible, if you're religious. So please uh, do go through it multiple times and ensure to note and highlight things that uh, really stand out for you. The first thing you do when you're in week two or just one week to go, is please buy the PSPO1 assessment. Yeah, uh, again, like first week we started with uh, registering. Again, this is another milestone that I like to set for myself, that I bought the assessment, I've spent the money, now I really need to get up and prepare and show up for my test. The only benefit is if you're not ready, you don't need to take the test because there is no set time or set place that you have to take the test. It's a you buy the assessment, you get the code, and when you take the test, use the code to access your assessment. So that way you have a flexibility, but why I really urge you to do this, because if you're procrastinating or you are one person who just says, okay, I'll take it later and don't feel motivated, this is something that really will really motivate you because you have made the investment. Step two. The most important part, this is where we switch gears. We have been taking the assessments and developing our knowledge and understanding of how it looks and how to answer those questions. So by now you have lots of PDFs. And of those two assessments, Scrum Open Assessment and also the Product Owners Open, this is when we accelerate. Basically, time management. Time management is the key. In the test, you have to answer 80 questions in 60 minutes. So basically, most people will be playing catch up during the test. And I don't want you to do so. I want you to time yourself. So for the Scrum Open Assessment, where you're answering 30 questions, they give you 30 minutes, please, please try to ensure that you wrap up within 15 to 20 minutes because you have been taking these assessments multiple times last week. And after taking them four or five times, you are seeing the same questions being repeated. So you are able to answer them faster, quicker from your memory, right? So please try to wrap up your Scrum Open in 15 to 20 minutes. If 15, marvelous, if not at least 20 minutes. Believe me, it sounds crazy that why would somebody want to answer so fast? It's just that if you push yourself harder, you will actually have time to answer all 80 questions on the day of your test and get back to the questions that you flagged while taking the test. So this will give you an advantage. Again, the Product Owners Open gives you 30 minutes to answer 15 questions. Even for a novice, you can tell that that's too much of time because the actual test will give you only 60 minutes for AD. So do the math and accelerate. You have been going through them, saving them, revisiting them. So please try to take them faster. These 15 questions should be answered in 10 minutes. I know that sounds crazy, but please, you will thank me when you take the test. Nothing will help you more than your muscle memory. Certain questions that you are able to answer in seconds will help you make time for the ones you don't know on the top of your hat. Like there will be questions that challenge you. Uh, out of those four uh, options, there will be two that you can outrightly reject. 
two will be such that they are very close competitors and you don't know which one is the best answer. And most questions are just choose the best answer. So it's not like choose the correct answer, choose the best option. So you have to reflect. And some are yes and no, which are basically um, easier because they are directly pulling from some concept from the scrum guide and it can either be a yes or no. So please try to go through the assessments enough number of times, as many times you need to take them to build up your confidence and speed that you are able to wrap up 15 product owner questions in 10 minutes and the scrum open in 20 minutes. The third thing that you should do now in second week or just seven days before your test is refer to the site which provides free assessments. In my case, I refer to MLAPSIN. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but this is the website which has the assessments in two modes. One is learning mode and the other one is real mode. In the learning mode, you will go step by step where you will answer and immediately you'll know whether it's correct or not and why not and then it will go slowly it will you can pace your test in the learning mode and in the real mode it will be like the actual test where you will continue answering questions and move on and in the end of the assessment you know your score and also the right answers to them not before. So MLAPS in the only is a great resource. In my case, it really helped me, but I took my exams in December. And the only catch here is back then, uh, we were still following, we were being tested on the Scrum 2017 version of the Scrum Guide. And uh, now you will be tested on the Scrum uh, November 2020. In the MLAPS in website, it is said that they are trying to update the Scrum Guide. Luckily, not too many changes have happened, but some have. So while taking the test, you have to take it with a pinch of salt that some of the concepts will be wrong. So you will find minor differences uh, across the two versions of Scrum. So when you're taking MLAPS and if you are asked the question, what is the ideal strength of a team, uh, Scrum team? Back then we answered like plus, minus three from six, so it was three and nine. And right now this revised updated scrum guide mentions less than 10. So there are such minor differences in terms and numbers, but overall, I guess, uh, most of the questions will be still relevant and have been unchanged. Previously, the Scrum Master was positioned as a servant leader. Now there's more focus, emphasis on the leadership role to be precise. So uh, please be aware of these small changes, but I still uh, strongly suggest you refer to this resource, make use of it. And uh, since you are reading the Scrum Guide and you will know the, where the differences are, so please use it. It really helped me prepare for the exam. Next thing is, uh, in addition to the square reading, the rereading the Scrum Guide, please refer to the Product Owners Learning Path. There are many questions and concepts here that mandate rereading or multiple reads depending on your experience. And even if you are very experienced in as a part of member of a Scrum team, I still find that you will, there will be certain concepts that you will find difficult to master and retain. And uh, so please go through those resources repeatedly as often as you can. And over time, you yourself, based on these assessments, will know which are the areas that you need to revisit. So based on the test, they will also act as an indicator, like a North Star telling you which way you need to go and which knowledge area you need to revisit again. So please go through the Scrum Guide and the Product Owner Learning Path multiple times. So the final question is, when are you ready? <laughs> yes, you are ready when you are able to score consistently over two, three days, 95% and above in the Scrum Open and the Product Owners Open. And though it doesn't say, please, in the shorter time, 20 minutes, 10 minutes. So basically you are able to consistently get 95%. I know it's steep, but honestly speaking, it's you who set up this goal, I hope, uh, for your personal development. Secondly, it's your money on the line and you are putting in all this effort. 
thirdly let's be honest there is no timer that said that you have to take the test on this sunday or monday so you have time you have time to prepare you have time to test yourself so please make use of these free assessments and only when you see that you are consistently scoring 95 percent and above i think you're ready go take that test and pass good luck so this is the end of my part two of the series. So before you go, I just want to tell you two things. One, I have uh, recorded a series of videos on PSM1 test, Professional Scrum Master 1. And it was a series of three videos. And the third video was for day of the test. Now that is equally relevant and equally true for PSP1. Hence, I did not go ahead and record another. So I'm simply putting a link up and down below in the comments so that you can go and check that out so before you take the test do visit that video and you will find usual uh, useful tips and tricks based on my personal experience um, for your for that d day so good luck go take the test and i hope you clear it bye bye thanks for watching and leave a comment on how you find these tips and strategies useful or absolutely <laughs> meaningless so just let us know either ways it is a learning experience for us and i i will try to improve and incorporate them in future so do leave a comment thank you for watching